I'll take what is a storm track we'll never see in the heart of winter for 1,000. I'm gonna show you that here in a minute because it's relevant to our weather over the next several days. We've got quite an active weekend of weather coming up heavy rains, hurricane force wind gusts are possible, big waves, rip currents, coastal flooding, a lot of beach erosion on tap, and even blizzard conditions. We're going to look at all of that and what the long range pattern has in store as well. But before we do, I wanted to show you the projected snow cover across the northern hemisphere. We're building that cryosphere. We want to see the snowpack settle in early in the season and get deeper and deeper so that we can watch cold air masses drop across that and not moderate as they enter the United States. Of course, that is from the perspective of a winter weather lover like myself, and so I'm always going to be pulling for winter weather when I have the chance to do so. But I wanted to show you that, just uh, that's what the projections look like over the next couple of weeks. Right now, we're looking at fairly decent growth here of snow cover and ice cover in the northern hemisphere. You can see that here in the white is snow, the yellow is ice. That's where we stand looking at where we are year to date. This red line represents where we are, and we are still in the middle of the pack. I showed this the other day, and we have not deviated. We're running better than last year, but about middle of the pack since 2005, 2006. And you can actually see departure from normal either side. Red is below a normal snow cover, and blue is above a normal snow cover. So we're running a little bit behind over here in Canada, but way ahead in Siberia. And a lot of our air masses come across the pole from Siberia. So we want to get that snowpack really deep and cold over there in Siberia. So that's what's going on, folks. Here's a surface map for today back home. We'll show you what the weather looks like. Very, very nice. High pressure and control up here over the Great Lakes into New England, down into much of the southeast of the Tennessee and Ohio Valley. Really not much going on. Just a few scattered showers up here in the northern and western Great Lakes, up north, uh, Lake Superior, back into Wisconsin, into parts of Missouri and Iowa. But the big story is the big heavy rain and flooding potential back into the the desert southwest into the Four Corners region when you see rounds of heavy rain through the next several days as tropical moisture. You can see tropical storm Priscilla coming into the screen. Moisture from this is going to be injected into the southeast and we've got another system down here that's going to work in that way too over the next several days. So we're going to see that. Another cold front coming in and a system working off uh, that's offshore working onshore bringing some rain into the Pacific Northwest as well. So that's your current weather map situation. Now, what we're going to do is take a look at how this East Coast storm evolves over the next several days. It all comes down to phasing. The models are starting to converge on a little bit of a better picture. The question mark remains how far north the system will get. There is still some divergence on that, but I expect that to converge over the next few days. Start here, you get this big short wave working in through Tennessee. So your storm track's kind of in this direction. Boy, that's something that we don't see in winter, is it? It's usually zipping through this way, coming out of North Texas and then up through the Great Lakes area. But uh, in this case, we've got a short wave diving down through Tennessee comes in and closes off here over the southeast and another short wave. This would normally in the wintertime just go on out to the east, but here in the fall, look what happens. That low that starts to spin up here off the southeast coast, courtesy of this upper level support, will merge over and around the Delmarva region with this other strong shortwave and uh, upper level low diving in. And those combined forces, you get a big coastal storm. And that's what's going on in the upper levels of the atmosphere. This phasing, where it takes place and the timing of it will dictate how strong the storm gets and exactly where it goes and uh, all of that. So we've got to watch that. When you have phasing, creating a storm or enhancing a storm, the timing of that is critical. And you can see it kind of gets its act together and goes on due east out to sea. Now this is the European Ensemble. The European Ensemble trend gift here over the last 48 hours kind of locked in. You can see a little bit of a bulge in the higher precipitation amounts. Eastern Carolina is down into Georgia and a reduction here in the Ohio Valley as that short wave to the north gets resolved. But really a lot of areas along the coast looking at two to four inches all the way up the coast. And if the storm system tracks a little farther, 
closer to the coast, a little farther west, we're going to see those amounts kind of bump up. Could see as much as half a foot of rain parts of eastern North Carolina. So pay attention to that. Another big problem with this is going to be coastal erosion and high tide and uh, inundation of the shoreline with flooding and the flow around that high pressure combined with the flow around this low pressure is just going to buffet the shore with strong easterly winds and we've seen erosion already throughout the summer. We're going to see more of that and unfortunately down in South Carolina and parts of North Carolina we're going to see six to as much as a foot above normal in some of those low-lying areas in terms of the water coming in. So five foot waves on top of that. So really looking for a lot of uh, coastal flooding. If you're driving around out in um, those sections of the eastern Carolinas up into the mid-Atlantic, be prepared for coastal flooding, potentially some houses getting flooded and roadways underwater. So you need to really pay attention. To that. That's going to be a big hazard here. As we kind of zoom on in, taking a look at Saturday morning at the wind gust. Right offshore, we're looking at winds in the 40s, but along shore, we're looking at winds in the 20s and 30s and uh, up into the Cape Hatteras area. If we advance this along to the evening, Saturday afternoon and evening, really seeing those winds crank up as that storm system comes together. 40s just offshore, 30s along shore up in Cape Hatteras, it's going to be much windier than that. And as we get on to the north, the winds really start to crank with this. So up here, Virginia Beach, all the way up to Cape Cod, we're going to see big time wind gusts and uh, looking at 40s and 50s easily along the coast, much higher than that offshore until we get on in toward um, Monday and Tuesday, things will kind of calm down Monday evening that is, but still ra raking the coastline of New England up here and uh, the northern mid-Atlantic area with big heavy wind gusts and uh, strong wind gusts rather 50s and 60s um, are not out of the question at all as this thing moves to the north and then by the time we get on into Wednesday things have kind of calmed down and it's moved on out to sea but definitely look for uh, strong winds, coastal flooding, rip currents, heavy rain, kind of timing all of this out. Not anything going on this afternoon and tomorrow, but as we get on in toward tomorrow evening, we're starting to see that really take shape off the coast of Florida. We get on in toward Saturday morning. Rain is piling up along the coast already as the storm system down here in the south takes shape and slides to the north by the time we get into Saturday evening. Heavy, heavy rain falling, gusty winds here in Cape Hatteras. That shortwave moving in through the lakes are, uh, is starting to merge with our southern system and really starts to crank it up. And you can see that here in terms of the reflection. We've got a couple of centers, and that's just a messy thing that happens as these storm systems kind of phase together. But the center will relocate, and we'll get a combined, a consolidated storm system here off the mid-Atlantic. And big rains, heavy winds up here is the time we get into Sunday afternoon and into a Monday morning still going and then eventually we pull this on out through the day on Monday into the overnight hours and we start to clear things out. How far north will the precipitation get? Maybe not quite all the way north into uh, Maine but southern Maine out here in New England is definitely going to see some showers but the farther the farther south and closer to the coast you are the higher the impacts are going to be and everybody else interior wise looking pretty good as we head through the weekend with just a few showers here in the eastern lakes as that short wave moves in. That's what the eastern part of uh, the United States is going to experience as we get on into the weekend. I'll have the western storm here in a second. In the meantime, I've got your weather IQ question coming right up. All right, today's question is, what is the driest month in history across the contiguous United States, excluding Hawaii and Alaska? And here are your choices. October, February, November, and July. If you know the answer, type in the comments, or if you just want to guess. Otherwise, wait till the end of the show. I'll let you know what it is. Right now, I'm going to show you what's kind of happening out west, because it's got a big storm system out there, too, as we head through the weekend. If you haven't yet joined the team, hit the subscribe button down below and like the video and certainly comment. All of this helps YouTube push this out to more people, and I really appreciate all the support. We're over 6,000 subscribers now. Leave a comment. Let me know where you're commenting from, and if there's anything we can be a prayer about, please put it down there. I want to support you and walk alongside of you. Check this out. Now, in the wintertime, this is something you would never see. A nice big storm system developing off the coast of the southeast down toward Florida, moving up the coast just offshore, phasing nicely, staying mostly offshore, and then moving moving on out to sea. That's not something that we'll see in the wintertime, is it? We'll see a big apps runner keeping us all in the warm sector here along the East Coast with heavy rain. But uh, boy, if this was wintertime, a lot of these interior sections from around I-95 and back to the West be seeing a lot of snow out of this. I wanted to show you that. Forgot to do that a while ago. In the meantime, heading out West, 
Ooh, we got a lot of uh, rain coming here for the Four Corner region, folks. You're going to have to keep those umbrellas handy. Flood watches are up through next week with tropical moisture being injected from Priscilla and then the next wave as well. We're just going to see that strong southerly flow continue. And then we've got another storm system pushing in here to the northwest. And look at this rain this afternoon into Friday. We keep this going into Saturday, raining heavily in the Four Corners region all the way up through Montana as that low pressure works in off the the uh, west coast and comes inland starts to organize an area of low pressure at the surface here in the plains that will strengthen shoot up into canada bring saskatchewan and manitoba a blizzard up there with strong winds and heavy snowfall and rain just continues in the southern sections of the four corners region out here in the desert areas and we'll see things kind of taper off a bit as we head on in toward Monday, but another storm system moves in to the Pacific Northwest. We've got a very, very, very active pattern here, folks. A lot of energy in the flow, looking at one to two inches, maybe even more than that, of a rain through Monday morning for much of the interior sections of the north uh, or the western portion of the country here through the Rockies, Four Corners region, up into Montana, and then over in the Cascades and the Valley sections toward the coast as well. Going to see lots of rain out out there to half an inch to as much as an inch and a half out there and as far as snowfall goes higher peaks are going to pick up quite a bit of snow looking at maybe one to two feet plus some of the prairies may see that a rain turn to snow as cold air works in on the back side of that storm and catches up to the precipitation that's falling so that is your western storm forecast going to be very active out west as well now we're going to take a look at the temperatures over the next couple of days Highs today working up into the 80s back into the plains, very much above normal as that ridge just content, uh, continues to persist here. Big trough out west pumping in that southerly flow, going to keep you warm. Trough in the northeast keeping us cool up here, not even going to get out of the 40s. That's much more like normal conditions for you all up here, probably even a little bit below, but uh, down here in the south where cold rain lives, going to be a spectacular fall day. Mostly clear skies with temperatures in the 70s and then warm in the interior northwest. That will continue tomorrow in much the same fashion. Highs in the 60s for parts of North Carolina. Can't get any better than that this time of year. Warming up a little bit in the northeast and cooling off a little bit in the northwest. West, still warm in the central portion of the country. Saturday, same regime, just a little bit warmer here in the east, a little bit cooler out west. And Sunday, going to see that storm start to take shape and pull in some cooler air. So look for temperatures to decline up here in the northwest and uh, surge ahead in the plains and be about the same here in the northeast down into the southeast too as that storm system is really cranking up here and starting to bring in some of those northerly winds. Looking at low temperatures, going to be very, very chilly overnight tonight as you wake up tomorrow. Watch those plants. Freeze warnings and frost advisories for much of the northeast with temperatures well below freezing into the 20s, even teens, 30s and 40s coming down all the way into the mountains of North Carolina back into the Ohio Valley and cool across the northern border up here in the northern plains. Not quite as cold tomorrow, but still many areas will be below freezing in the northeast, but warming up a little bit there, cooling off in the northern plains and back in, in the Midwest and back to the uh, west as well. As that storm system pulls away, it's going to drag in lots of cold air down behind it, so you're going to wake up to some chilly readings on the old thermometer on Sunday morning and cooling off back into the northeast as well and staying above normal in the central plains. And that is your forecast. We're going to take a look at the long range really quick and then wrap up with space weather and the answer to that IAQ question coming right up. So as we take a look at the long range, kind of the persistent theme that we're seeing this year so far as we head into the fall is a big ridge here, some troughing eventually along the east and the west. That's where the blue is. The ridging is the red and uh, the bending of these heights toward the north. And watch this as we go on out through the weekend into next week. You can see that ridge still poking up here in the center portion of the country with that storm system in the east and the storm system in the west, keeping us cooler than normal and unsettled in those areas of the country. We get on out into toward the middle of next week. Big storm system keeping it cool and unsettled still out west, but that ridge is right in the middle of the country. That shuts the Gulf off too, by the way. We get that northwesterly flow you don't get moisture transport out of the Gulf, so we don't see big rain events along the East Coast. But we will have several short waves kind of diving over the apex of this ridge in Canada into the Northeast, keeping you cool there and wedging down the East Apps will keep us at least 
toward normal uh, on balance, but uh, middle of the country looking to stay much, much above normal as we get on out through 10 days. As a matter of fact, if you take a look here at the cooler and warmer anomaly map, this is the cooler than normal in the blues and purples, warmer in the reds and oranges. And you can see where as we get on into Sunday and uh, into Monday, much warmer than normal here in the middle of the country. We've been cool in the east, but we'll start to warm up a bit. Cool out west as northwesterly flow and another system works in out there. We get on into the middle part of next week. Another trough works into the northeast, keeping us cooling us back down and maybe wedging back down to the upper southeast, but warm again here in the central plains. You can just see those reds just bake the central plains relative to normal and, of course, over in the west, another system working in there, too. Looking at the actual official 6 to 10 day forecast, shows you just what I showed you. Big signal for warm here in the central portion of the country over in the east, near normal to maybe slightly below in some areas, but the big signal for below out west with Alaska and Hawaii above. And precipitation on balance is going to be much above here in the west with these consistent storm in pieces of energy, storms and pieces of energy in, in the flow moving in through the west, keeping us moist out here. Very dry with the Gulf shut off here in the southeast, particularly up into the Ohio Valley. And we'll see a few of those short waves move out of Canada, bringing some rain to the northeast where you need it. You need rain out here as well, but it's good to see that you are all getting some rain out here in the west. Alaska and Hawaii both above normal, expected to be anyway. That's the 6 to 10 day period, October the 14th through the 18th. We're going to wrap things up with space weather and the answer to today's weather IQ question. Do a quick flyby on space and geological weather today. Not much to talk about except for this big coronal hole. There it is. You can see that very, very well here on the disk. That is toward us. We'll see solar wind increase and probably some higher bars on the KP as we move out in time. No big solar flares coming from sunspots because there aren't very many complex sunspots. There's only four on the disk and they are turning away. There's actually a fifth one there, but uh, nothing big coming in just yet. So we'll keep our eyes on it. In the meantime, just a few small shakes. No big earthquake or a volcanic activity that we need to worry about. The moon is 91.9 percent. It's actually coming up very uh, a little bit later now so I can see it come up above the horizon. It was big and orange last night which is great. I like to see that. And then the new moon is October the 22nd folks and that wraps us up for today with the exception of one small detail and that is the answer to today's weather IQ question. What is the driest month in history across the contiguous U.S. October, February, uh, November or July, which month would you expect to have been the driest one in history? And it, it's actually October of 1952. The average precipitation that month was 0.54 inches with a, where the normal should be two inches across the entire United States. Now you know the driest month in history was 1952 in October. Also back on October the 9th, 1876, way, way, way back, the first two-way long-distance telephone call was made by Alexander Graham Bell. He talked to his friend, colleague, Thomas Watson, talking over a two-mile wire between Cambridge and Boston, Massachusetts. And now you know the weather and a little bit about history as well. Hope you've enjoyed the show today, folks. I've enjoyed being here with you. Hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day. Be back tomorrow with another episode of Cold Rain's Weather World. You can follow me on X at Real Cold Rain. As always, have a blessed day. God bless you and keep you, and hope you have a wonderful afternoon. Take care, everybody.